friends, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content here on YouTube. I have a passion for creating simple, budget-friendly projects for my home and I'd love for you to tag along. To stay up to date on my latest videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Let's jump into today's video. Today I'll be showing you a few quick and easy ways to create an eclectic gallery wall. I love seeing wall art that incorporates texture and dimension to help break up the otherwise flat plane of the wall. Both of today's projects are perfect for beginners, so let's get started with the first one. I am someone who absolutely loves finding new art prints for my home, but as you know, the price of frames can really add up. So for my first project, I'll be making simple yet beautiful magnetic poster hangers that I can use to finally display a few of the art pieces I've had waiting to be hung. Let's jump in. We're going to start off this project with four of these five gallon paint stirring sticks. These cost only about 50 cents each, so this is an extremely affordable alternative to store-bought poster hangers. I'm lightly marking the top stick at about a quarter inch past the edge of my artwork, and then sawing all four pieces at that length using my miter box saw. Next, I'm cleaning up the rough edges of each stick using some 220 grit sandpaper. Take your time and make sure you don't have any splintered pieces when you're done. I wasn't sure which stain I wanted to use, so I'm using a leftover end of one stick to test three different stains. The first one is the shade Red Mahogany by Bear. Next, I'm using my current favorite Minwax stain in the shade Espresso. And finally, I'm trying out a lighter stain also by Minwax called Early American. It looks unusually light with the glare, but you can see its true hue better from this angle here. When all three stains were dry, I held them up to the art print I'll be framing to see which of them paired best with it. I wasn't too surprised when I ultimately decided on my favorite shade, Espresso. The next step, of course, is to stain all sides of the four sticks completely using that shade. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I prefer staining without gloves and just washing my hands immediately afterwards. But if you want to be a bit cleaner, you could wear gloves for this step. I let my sticks dry overnight just to be safe, and now I'm ready to add my magnets to them. I bought this long magnetic strip that I'll link below specifically for this project because I wanted something strong but with a very low profile. I'm eyeballing the length of the first strip and then using that as a reference to cut three more so that I end up with one for each paint stick. Next, I'm removing the backing from one of the strips and placing it fairly close to the long edge of one of my paint sticks. This is so that when I clamp it onto my artwork, I can cover as little of the image as possible. Then, with the adhesive backing still on, I'm placing a second strip directly over the first to ensure they match up perfectly. When I'm satisfied, I'm removing the backing off of that one and placing the next paint stick on top of it and pressing firmly to ensure it adheres well. I'm repeating this process using the last two paint sticks. As you can see here, the magnets have adhered perfectly to the wood and we're ready for our last step. With the magnet side facing away from me, I'm measuring out a piece of macrame cord that I'll be using to hang this from a hook on the wall. You could opt for something thinner if you'd like, but I wanted to tie in macrame elements since they appear throughout my home. Finally, I'm using my favorite Gorilla Hot Glue to attach the cord to the back of my frame at each end. Once the glue has dried, you're ready to hang your artwork. I'm really pleased that for just a couple bucks, I was able to finally get these art prints out of my closet and hung on the wall. If you like lighter tones in your home, you could even make this project without staining the wood at all. But you know how much I love my espresso stain, so I made myself a second hanger for this smaller print as well. 
It's crazy to think that these poster hangers can easily cost around $20 if you buy them online, but with a few simple tools and some creativity, you can make them for a small fraction of that at home. Here's what they look like styled together and with a sneak peek of today's second project in the upper left hand corner. For my second and final project, I'll be using this beautiful, fun hook rack that was gifted to me over the holidays. When I saw it, I immediately pictured it being used to hang plant propagation vessels on the wall. So I'll be showing you how to achieve that with just three items, a hook rack, macrame cord, and mountable propagation orbs. Let's jump in. As you saw in that sneak peek, I'll be using a very simple, repetitive macrame technique to hang these glass propagation orbs from my hook rack. First, I'm laying out the rack and one orb just so I can visualize roughly how much macrame I'll need to get it the length I want. I ended up using about 2 feet of cord for the inner loop and about 8 feet for the outer one, which will be the working cord I use to tie knots. After taping down the inner cord, I'm ready to begin my first knot by taking the outer right cord and making a backwards number 4 with it. Then I'm bringing the outer left cord over top of it and then under the two middle cords and up through the loop on the right hand side. This creates the first half of a square knot, which I'll slide up about a centimeter below the hook before repeating the process in reverse by taking the outer left hand cord, making a forward facing number four, and then bringing the outer right hand cord over that, behind the middle two cords, and up through the loop on the left hand side. When the first square knot is complete and pulled tight, I repeat this process alternating between backward facing number 4s and forward facing number 4s to create a flat macrame design. When I've reached my desired length, I'm removing the hook and tape and rotating the cord 180 degrees before feeding the two outer cords up through the hole in my propagation orb. Next, I'm making one last square knot by tying the long outer cords around all four inner cords. The first half of the knot may look a little odd, but when the second half is completed, it will be snug and flat. Finally, I'm trimming off all my excess cord. I repeated the backward facing number 4 knot continuously to make two shorter cords that had a swirl to them. Then because my inner cords were long enough, I tried an alternate way of tying it off by threading those up through the propagation orb and then using the long outer cords to tie two more knots around the four inner strands as seen here. As before, I'm trimming off the excess cords before mounting my new propagation station on the wall, adding water and plant cuttings, and enjoying this living artwork. The set of orbs I used actually came in a pack of six, so I'm looking forward to mounting the remaining three somewhere else in my home. As always, I'll make sure to link these ones below, and I would love to see your recreations of this project on Instagram. If you decide to give it a try, make sure to tag me so I can check it out. I couldn't be happier with how today's projects came together to add dimension and life to my wall, and I hope you found inspiration from them. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed these easier projects. I'd love to know down in the comments which one you could see yourself using in your home. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time!